Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Professor McCullough, and <clears throat> wanted to give you a little bit of information this week. Obviously, it's a snow day. Enjoy the snow day, but um, due to my absence, we lost uh, some time. I wanted to try to make up for some of that time uh, by giving you a little bit of content this week. So here we go. I'm going to talk about some stuff from Chapter 3. Um, the relational database model. Here we go. Let's go to desktop two. We're going to share that one. All right. Um, you should be seeing a spreadsheet. Um, we're going to kind of tear spreadsheets apart. We're going to talk about why spreadsheets are not really that useful, why we need a thing called the database, why it's better for many of our purposes. And we'll also see over here, we got an ERD featuring painter and painting. That's kind of the theme of the day. Uh, and it's one that should be familiar, right? Because one of your homework assignments asked you to, um, to design an ERD for painter and painting. Very straightforward. Let's look at the spreadsheet. It's on painters. Look at that. And it's, you know, it's real basic. There are certainly more painters than these three, but these are good ones, Van Gogh, Renoir, and Monet. And what we have here is this really clumsy thing. We got it broken out by first name, last name, the year they born, the year they died. And then information on their paintings, right? Painting one, it's got a name, Cafe Terrace on the something. Oh, it's not going to let me click on these things. That's a problem. Let's try to fix that. So, uh, let's try refreshing this. That should help. Okay, come on. There we go. All right. Um, and then it's got a list of their paintings. And paintings have long names, right? So I'm not even giving you the full name, but if you're curious, like Vincent Van Gogh has a painting. Oh, Cafe Terrace on the, oh man, this is clunky. This is really clunky on the Place de Du Forum, I don't know, it's French. Anyway, all these paintings have names and the only other piece of information we are gonna associate with each painting is the year. Although certainly we could do other things like are they oil paintings or are they watercolor paintings? We could store all sorts of information about the painting but we're just demonstrating stuff. So here's the year they were painted, which by the way, totally made up. Don't rely on this information for your art class. It is not accurate. I just threw in some year that was between the year they were born and they died. Um, so here's where it gets awkward, right? We got the title, we got the year, then we got another title, we got another year. And then slowly but surely, we start to get a, to a part in the table where like, well, painting four, well, Van Gogh has a painting four but Renoir doesn't have a painting for, and Monet doesn't have a painting for, right? So we have these columns for which there are no values. So that's just wasted memory space. And as we'll see probably in the next lecture, um, when you get to other relationships that involve like a many to many, then things get even more tricky and confusing. And a spreadsheet has a harder and harder time representing things without errors or the possibility of errors. So this is not an optimal way to store this information. A better way would be a database in which we break out the two entities into their own tables. What would that look like? What would the entities be? Well, the entities are nouns and pretty clearly the two nouns that we're dealing with here our painter and painting. So let's start by breaking out the information about uh, 
individual painter, right? Here's our painter table, and this will be fairly easy to copy, right? This right here is the information about the painters, right? Separate from the information about the painting. So let's just copy that. And notice I'm gonna put it here. There we go, we have our three different painters. And what do I need to add here? What field do we always wanna have in a relational database? We wanna have a primary key, um, which we'll call, let's go ahead and say painter ID. Then we can just go one, two, and three, right? This is a primary key. Let me go ahead and indicate that, right? Primary key means it's going to be unique for every one of our rows, that is to say, for every one of our entities. This number is going to stand for one painter and one painter only. All right, let's go ahead and resize this back to normal. All right, so that requires us to also have a separate table for our other entity. And this one is gonna be called painting. And this one is gonna be a little more difficult to tease out. Let's, um, what do we keep track of? We want to have the painting's name and we want to have the year it was painted. And of course, eventually we want to have a painting ID and that's gonna be the primary key, right? And of course, associated with each painting, we also want to have the painter. That's, what, that's the connective tissue between painter and paintings, right? Is every painting has a painter. So fastest way to do this, let's go ahead and we'll just copy um, names and years, paste those in. Ari Knight, popular painting by Van Gogh. Iris is, I learned more about art today than I have probably in my life. I guess I like Van Gogh more than the other artists. I saw I gave him five paintings. Yeah. Copy and paste. All right, now we didn't know what we were doing. We might just start to type in Van Gogh and Van Gogh. And I know Excel, so I could even do Van Gogh, right? But Van Gogh only gives us one piece of information about that painter, specifically uh, his last name, right? Why not do more than that? Why not just make an association over to this table over here? If we presented instead of the name, if we presented the primary key, then boom, that gives us access to this entire row. So we could tell you all of these things about the painter who painted um, Cafe Terrace, Cafe Terrace on the Place du Forum, that's the name, right? So instead of doing that, let's do painter ID. And instead of listing Van Gogh, we'll just say one. A painter's ID is one. All right, and then we get information for the other paintings. Um, our next painting is our first one by Renoir. Another painting, Two Sisters. And another painting, Dance at the Moulin something, Degalette, Degalette. Don't know French. 
Um, so there we go. And the painter ID for those is two, right? Two is the primary key for Renoir. So we put two for all of those. And finally, Monet. Copy Monet's paintings, names and years. Again, made up years. Okay, and since we want to associate Monet with each of these paintings, which he painted, we just plug in the key of three for the painter ID, right? And the painter ID, because it refers to a primary key in another table, it is considered a foreign key in the painting table. So we'll just make a reference to that. This is a foreign key, which means we can use that number and look it up on another table to get information about the painter. Right. And of course, all of our tables should have their own ID column. And so we'll just put that here. We'll just do one and two. And then we can just have those numbers fill in. Right. So now our paintings all have a unique ID. So painting ID is a primary key. And painters all have their unique ID. Um, which is painter ID. So now this stores all of the same information that is here, but we've lost some of the waste and um, eliminated some potential redundancies that we might have. So this is how you would transfer an ugly spreadsheet into a beautiful, beautiful database featuring two tables. Let's slide over here. Um, here is an entity relational diagram for painter and painting containing that information. We have all of the same fields. Painter has an ID, first name, last name, born and died, and the associated data types. This, by the way, is done in MySQL, um, which is, you know, it has the same tool for designing ERDs that you used with our online site, which, uh, Lucid, it was Lucid. Yeah. Um, so these are all the fields that I have created, but I want to show you something that's pretty cool. We need to define the relationship, right? And the relationship is a painter paints paintings. So we go over here. And we want to do a one to many. Let's see if I get the order right here. I think we need to start here. And then click here, there we go. It is a one to many. One painter paints at least one paintings, potentially many paintings. And here we have it, but look at this. When I made that connection, a key was added here. Painter ID was just added to uh, this entity. And if we go down and look at the data for uh, painting, uh, if we look at the schema, I should say, this is the schema, right? It has added a foreign key, right? And we know that it's a foreign key. If we click on foreign keys, it tells me that the foreign key is for is within painting and it refers to the painter right so that is the connective tissue between these two entities all right i think we have a general idea of what foreign keys are um hopefully uh, we'll obviously be talking about foreign keys a lot in the days ahead
but hopefully this is helpful to you.